It's the Wednesday night virtual Bible study with Pastor Steve Hare, coming to you from Faith City Family Church in Newark, Delaware. Pastor Hare is a man who cares about people, bringing change to the lives of others and communities through the power of God's Word. Here's Steve Hare. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the virtual Bible study. We're continuing our series on the road to recovery. What a topic we're going to be dealing with out of the Word of God for the next 30 minutes. And it's called, it's two words, but it's huge. Letting go. Letting go. I'm telling you, it's so critical in life that we let go of things that want to hang on things that happened years ago, uh, maybe a chapter in our lives that was super difficult and heartbreaking and everything else. The Bible teaches us that we have to let go. And our theme verse is in Matthew chapter 11. Let me go over to that. Matthew chapter 11, because I believe God's going to help us to let some things go, to let them go. Matthew 11 verses 28 through 30, Jesus said these words, Come to me, all ye who are weary and overburdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Back to the beginning, come to me, all you who are weary and overburdened. What, what makes us weary sometimes? What can overburden us sometimes? Well, holding on to things. I've prayed with people, talked with people over the years, and they've allowed things to just pile on, and they're almost at a state of overwhelm because they did not forgive. They did not let go. It's not an easy thing to do, but it's something we must do. I'm going to get ready in just a moment to share with you five things that could be stopping you and me from taking this step. But before I do, I would like to reach out to you. We're coming to you from Faith City Family Church, and many of you know that we're all about not only ministry inside the walls, but ministry outside the walls of the church. You know, we're getting ready to do another one of these Festival of Hope events. The Festival of Hope. What is it? It's the free expungement clinic where all the processing fees are paid. It's the community partners exhibits, giving people information, connecting them to organizations that are actually there that can help them and their families. It's the job fair where there are organizations there ready to hire on site. It's just amazing when you see what God does and the huge response that comes through the Festival of Hope. But above all of that, the sharing of the gospel. I'll talk, I'll share, I'll preach seven, eight minutes, the gospel message, and people are just waiting and they're just ready to respond. They come down from the bleachers in those big gymnasiums and they cry and they pray and they ask God to help them. We're getting ready to do another one. And all of these efforts, all of these initiatives, whether it's the youth Bible outreach to public schools, whether it's the Festival of Hope and the follow-up after the Festival of Hope, it all happens because of good people like you who say, you know what? The world is in a pretty tough condition, and we've got to do more than the sermon and the songs, and we have to do more to change our community and our world than just the inside internal programs inside of the church, which is great and awesome. But Jesus said to the church in Luke 14 and 23, 
go out. That means go outside of the church building. There's not enough church buildings in this nation to house everybody. If everybody in America said, I'm going to church the same Sunday, there's no way we could house them all, hundreds of millions of people. So he says, go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. So he's saying the, pri- the byproduct of going out is that people will come to Christ and some of them will get rooted and grounded and planted into the house of the Lord. Would you help us go out? I promise you that every soul that is changed, every record that's expunged, every job that is garnered, every family that is elevated, you're going to reap that back in your own life, in your own family. I promise you. And so let me give you the verse, Proverbs 3, 9 and 10. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty. Thy presses shall burst out with new wine. Giving 10%, the tithe of that paycheck, whatever money God helps us to make each week, we give it as unto the Lord. If you would help us, we'd be so grateful. And the moment that you release it from your life, God has something to come into your life. You can give your tithes and special outreach offerings in the following ways. You can text to give at 302-455-2820. It's quick. It's secure. It's safe. I hope you'll do it right away. The dollar sign, Faith City FC2, is the cash app option. Lower or uppercase doesn't matter. Download the app on your Apple or Android device. You can give just right off of your phone. And then many are going to the new faithcitynow.com. It's a great website. You need to check it out. Matter of fact, this, uh, this the other Sunday, a lady came up to me and she said, I went on faithcitynow.com. I did a schedule of a visit. I'm visiting the church today. It was really, really, oh, visit that website. It's got a lot of good features there for you. Maybe you just want to write a check and send it in the mail. 179 Stanton Christiana Road, Newark, Delaware, 19702. Some of you are saying, is that the church? Well, yeah, you can't get all of it in one big picture. But yeah, there's the big round sanctuary and the educational school wing and all of that. And you ought to come out and visit us. And remember, we're all about the kids. We have a great kids ministry. We call it Faith City Kids. And while we have service at 9 and 11 on Sundays, you can put your children into the Faith City Kids ministry at 9 and 11, whether it's nursery or preschool or children's church, they're going to love it. It's continuing to grow and grow and grow. We have a children's choir that is so excellent. So get the kids involved, the grandkids, and you come on out and worship at Faith City Family Church. Continuing the series, The Road to Recovery, the topic, The Road to Recovery, in the virtual Bible study as we come together on Wednesday nights. And the theme is, the topic is letting go. What could keep me from taking this step of letting go? Well, the Bible says there could be at least five things getting in the way. Let's see if one of them are getting in your way. Number one, uh uh-oh. Here comes the pride word, pride. I don't want to admit I need help. Now, you know this is real. You know it's real. We've all been there. It's like, oh, man, I'm going home for the holidays. I'm going to some, being around some friends. I don't want them to know I got this going on. I don't want anybody to know I need prayer. I need help on anything. And, you know, there, there's a balance to using wisdom and not, you know, telling everybody all your business. You don't want to do that. But at the same time, you want to ask God, God, would you send people into my life that I could trust, that when I talk to them, it doesn't get all over the world, but I can trust them. They know how to pray. They have a relationship with God. The Scripture says in Proverbs 18, 12, arrogant people are on the way to ruin. And, you know, like arrogance and pride, they're to me, they're kind of like cousins. They're related. 
You've been around people that are arrogant, they're prideful, they act exclusive, they're better than everyone else. They never have a problem. There's never a bill they couldn't pay. I mean, everything's perfect. And the Bible puts out a warning, don't let pride get in the way from you taking the step of letting go. And sometimes letting go is just saying, I need you all to pray for me. I've been carrying this thing around for a long time. Would you pray for me? Here's another thing that could get in the way. It's sad when it happens, but it could get in the way. Guilt. Guilt. And uh, it happens to all of us. Pastor, have you ever felt guilty? Uh, yeah. Have you ever done something that you wish you hadn't done, said something you wish you hadn't said? Of course. It's called part of living life. But sometimes guilt overwhelms people so much they feel so bad, they feel so unworthy that it gets in the way of them letting go all of the past so they, they can hit the reset button and go on with the rest of their life. Look what the Bible says in Proverbs 40, verse number 12. Great verse. Problems far too big for me to solve, David said, are piled higher than my head. Meanwhile, my sins too many to count, he said, have all caught up with me, and I am ashamed to look up. In other words, I guess he let himself go for a while. Let's be honest. We all know what it's like to let something go, leave something laying around. Don't clean up something for a long time. And things begin to pile up, and all of a sudden, boom, you find yourself guilty. I'm a mess. I'll never get out of this. But you can't allow that to get in the way to ask God for help. Back to number one, pride. I don't want to admit I need help. Number two, guilt. I'm ashamed to ask God for help. Don't you ever be ashamed to ask God for help. And please, once you find a small circle of friends or whatever in your life that you can trust, it's okay to humble yourself and say, look, I need some prayer. I need some help. I'm hurting. What else could keep me from taking this step of letting go? The Bible says it's not only pride could do it, not only guilt could do it, but it's also fear. Fear could do it. I'm afraid of what I'd have to give up. So in other words, if I let go, I let God, I turn it over to God, Wow, what's it going to cost me? I'm going to lose some friends, a relationship, opportunities, a promotion, all of that kind of thing. And I'm afraid of what I may have to give up to turn it all over to God and go God's way. Sometimes we do have to give up a few things when we take the path, which is the best path, of course, God's path, and not just our path, the world's path or the path of least resistance, yeah, there's some things sometimes we have to give up. And what does it read here? Mark 8, 36, powerful verse. How does a man benefit if he gains the whole world and loses his soul in the process? Is anything worth more than his soul? Pride. That can get in the way of letting go. Guilt, get in the way. Fear, I'm afraid of what I have to give up. You know what? When you go all in for God, there's always something you might have to adjust. There's always something you might have to change or recalibrate or give up. But I want to encourage you, go with God. I've heard people say over the years, I'm so glad I've fully surrendered to God, and I lost some friends, and I lost this opportunity and whatever, but now my life is so much better because I let go of all the things, all the baggage that I didn't need to carry around anymore. Talking about the road to recovery, learning to let go. The Bible says not only pride, guilt, fear could get in the way, but here's another one. Worry. Yeah, it's real, isn't it? We all deal with it. Worry. Or I confuse the decision phase with the problem-solving phase. Can I let that sit there a second? That's a good word. I confuse the decision phase, all right, decision, with the problem-solving phase. 
So in other words, we want to do everything all at once. So I'm going to let that sit on the screen. So when we're letting go, there is the decision phase. Like, I'm deciding, I'm letting all this go, or I'm going to get this, this out of my life, I'm going to get that out of my life, I'm going to let go of my past. That's the decision phase of it. But then we think sometimes when we make the decision, it's going to solve all our problems. No, they're two separate things. 1 Peter 5, 7. You make the decision, that's the beginning. Then you cast all your anxiety while you're working through their problems. Because problems don't get solved most of the time at a snap of a finger. It's a process. Casting all your anxiety on God because he cares for you. Don't confuse the decision phase with the problem-solving phase. Cast all your anxiety on God, and you know, it's like, God, I made the right decision. God, I rededicated my life. Lord, I surrender all. I gave my life to you. We're going to do that in just a moment, give you a chance to give your life to Jesus Christ. I did it, God. And then sometimes we feel, oh, now all my problems are solved. No, I've seen this happen many times. You make a good decision here come the devil. He's going to attack you from every side that he can to discourage you and make you want to give up. But the more he attacks, the more he tries to frustrate and get in the way, you stay faithful. No, I made the decision. I'm going to serve the Lord. I'm going to love the Lord my God with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength. I'm going to love my neighbor as myself. I'm going to get rid of these relationships I don't need. I'm going to make the adjustments. Now, I know it's going to be a process to solve these problems. But Philippians 1, 8. I might just shout when I read this one. When I was studying this, man. You ought to praise God when I'm reading it. God who began the good work within you. Remember, we start somewhere. It's always a beginning. God who started the good work within you will keep right on helping you grow in his grace until his love is finally finished. He will keep right on what? What does it say? Helping you. But before he can keep on helping you, you got to make the decision. I'm making these changes I'm going to let go. I've been letting the past hold me back. I've been letting these relationships I don't really need hold me back. These habits hold me back. I'm making a decision. And then trust on God. Give your anxiety to him and know it's a process over time. And then what else could keep you and me from taking this all-important step of letting go? Not only pride and guilt and fear and worry, but the next is doubt. Boy, you got to watch that one. Boy, that is such a, wow, that that wants to sneak in all of a sudden doubt, which means we believe the lie. My faith seems so small. Boy, isn't that slick for the devil to make people to think you don't have enough faith. Well, I got something for you going to encourage you right now and give the devil a knockout blow. The Bible says these words, to every man and woman is given the measure of faith. When you were born, you were given the measure of faith. How much faith does it take to move a mountain? How much faith does it take to get a miracle? Well, let's quote the Bible. And Jesus answered and said unto them, If you will have faith as a grain of mustard seed. Whoa. You know how small a mustard seed is? You can't see it when you put it in a human hand. If you have faith as as small as a mustard seed, nothing will be impossible for you. Who does the devil think he is? to tell you you don't have enough faith. I need you to repeat this after me. Come on, say it after me. Say, I've got more than enough faith to move the mountains in my life. Mark chapter 11, it says you can move. You can move mountains. And Mark 11, verse 23, 24, 25, and whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, be cast into the sea, shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith, mustard seed faith, speaking the words of God. What could keep me from taking this step of letting go? Let's review before we go on to the next part. What could get in the way? Pride, guilt, fear, 
I'm afraid of what I'd have to give up. Worry, I confuse the decision phase with the problem-solving phase. Five, doubt, my faith seems too small. All right, on to the next part here. Question, how do I take this step? How do I do it? Well, I want to share with you four things the Bible says to do to take this step. Number one, accept God's Son as my Savior. You got to get started out on the right foot, and that is a relationship with Jesus Christ. Acts 16 and 31 says, believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. Accept God's Son as my Savior. If you've never accepted Him, or maybe you've drifted away and you need to come back to Him, can I invite you right now to pray this prayer with me? No matter where, you, you can be in your car right now watching this or just anywhere in the world, at an airport somewhere. I've had people over the times we've been on all these different platforms, they've told me I watched in the car, I was in the laundromat, I was in a, 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 in a waiting room somewhere, and they're just scrolling and they, they tune on to the Bible study. Come on, pray this prayer with me. Jesus will save you wherever you're at. Come on, say it. Say, dear Jesus, I believe you died on the cross for all my sins. I confess my sin, come into my heart, wash my sins away, save my soul, amen and amen. A simple prayer, a powerful principle, and the truth is, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. How do I take this step? Number one, I accept God's Son as my Savior, as you just did. Number two, I accept God's Word as my, note the word, standard. No, I just don't kind of half-step in my relationship with Christ. On Sunday, I kind of feel a little bit more holy. I act a little bit better. I watch my language when it's on Sunday. But by Tuesday, I've drifted all the way back. I'm about 70% world, 30% God. No, you got to make a quality decision, even though we're going to stumble. We are going to make mistakes. We are going to come short of the glory of God and sin. The Bible says... You need to accept God's Word as your standard, as the goal that you're aiming for. 2 Timothy 3, 16. All Scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching the faith and correcting error, for resetting the direction of a man's life and training him in good living. How much of the Bible is relevant? Well, it says here, all Scripture from Genesis to Revelation. So I accept God's Son as my Savior. I accept God's Word as my standard. And number three, I accept God's will, oh, I love this one, as my strategy. How do I take this step of letting go? I'm accepting God's will as my strategy. Remember Jesus said, not my will. Remember that? Not my will, but thy will be done. That's what he said. And another verse with a reflective thought on this is Psalm 40, verse 8. I desire to do your will, oh my God. I accept God's Son. I accept His Word as my standard. I accept God's will, not my will. And it may be like, God, I don't know. I, I've never done this. I've, I've never ventured out, or I've never had to make changes so much at one time. And God, I don't know. But God knows. Go by faith and accept His will as His strategy for your life. And then finally, number four, I accept God's power as my strength. Philippians 4.13, I can do everything God asks me to do with the help of Christ who gives me the strength and the power. Yes, how do I take the step of letting go? I accept God's Son. I accept God's Word. I accept God's will. I accept God's power as my strength. His will is my strategy. His Word is my standard. His Son as my Savior. And I believe that this is empowering you and me to let go of the things that we need to let go of. Get rid of the excess baggage and go by faith with God. Do you need prayer? Do you need to let go of some things? 
When you let him go, it's going to bring some changes for a while. But what you going to do? You're going to do what you've always done and uh, have what you always had? Really? Now you're better than that. We're going to surrender all to God. We're saying, God, I'm in a journey here. What tweaks do you want me to make in my life? What do you want me to let go? And some of you need to let go of the past. That's really been a problem. you got to let it go. Forgive and forget. Forgiveness does more for you than the one you're forgiving. Just take some time and think about that when you get some time. It's going to really be a blessing to you. So can we pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for this series, The Road to Recovery, and this topic, Letting Go, this Bible study. Lord, this, 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 this journey of life issues and life topics and all of this during the center of the week, it's not a church service, Lord. It's just uh, the Word, the Word, the Word, the Word. And you said the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. I pray God would give you the power to let go of the things that have been holding you back, the hurts in the past that you need to let go. In Jesus' name, amen. I enjoyed this. I hope it was a blessing, and I hope you'll come out, and I'd like to meet you in person. See, after every service at 9 and 11 on Sundays, we have a visitor reception, refreshments, and I'm there to meet people, and I'd love to meet you Sundays at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. in person. If you can't get out, of course, you can go to faithcitynow.com and get all of the links to watch. And remember, bring the kids, the grandkids. You come, and you take them to Faith City Kids in the big, beautiful church facility They'll take care of those kids, give them a great time, and you'll be able to be in the house of the Lord and be encouraged and empowered with praise, worship, and the Word of God in ministry. Well, it's been great to be with you. Remember, I'm praying for you. And remember, next week we have another one. Let me see that. Let me look. Let me look here. We've got another one. Maintaining momentum. I had written it down. I couldn't see where I wrote it. Isn't it frustrating that you could get this far, you could let go, and then all of a sudden it fall apart again? No. Next week, I want to show you how you can maintain, maintain momentum and movement and get to the promised land that God has promised for you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord give up his countenance towards you and shine on you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you for being part of the Wednesday night virtual Bible study with Pastor Steve Hare. We invite you to come and worship with us on Sundays at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. in person or online. For all the info, go to faithcitynow.com. That's faithcitynow.com. And remember, God's Word always has the power to change your life.